So let's run it. Uh, we cannot say continue calculation because this is a totally new setup. A lot of times it'll gray out because you've made a fundamental change. Not all changes will require you to do that. Like if I was to solve this and then stop and then come over here and adjust the amount of heat rate, I could continue the calculation almost like I'd turned the dial down on my heat, uh, you know, halfway through the study. And that's true of transient or steady state. So we'll click run and we're going to see the same solver window that we saw before. And if you've created plots previously in this study, uh, those plots will come up automatically. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is those plots do take resources to produce. So if you're the kind of person that just loves watching plots and you create 10 plots all out here in the graphics area, um, just shut those down before you before you walk away because they take time for each iteration to show that plot and you're not really, you know, you're, you're basically wasting time uh, showing those pretty previews when you don't need them. So I'm going to close that out. I don't care about this. I do care about the CPU time and the calculation time left because this is going to take a while. Looking at the physical time, we can see that the physical time we're at a couple seconds in, that's not bad. A lot of times for things with a high pressure gradient, you're gonna see that the physical time step is gonna be in the you know, thousandths, millionths of a second. And it's gonna take forever to get that resolution going. And that's because you have this massive starting shock wave that has to be resolved. So for those, ramp up the pressure, that'll work a lot faster, uh, be a lot less of a shock to the system. Uh, but this is going fairly well. If you have a transient study that's taking too long, that's when you can come up to the calculation control options. Remember I said you can get those uh, from inside the solver or, you know, uh, out, you know, separate from the study. And so if I want to change the saving or anything else, I can. But I want to do uh, two things. I want to look at refinement. Right now it's refinement is disabled. Uh, if I was to say, hey, you know, this is a 10 minute solve. If five minutes in, let's, let's resolve uh, and refine the mesh based on the results so far. It'll do a solution adaptive refinement for you uh, at your specified parameters. If you wanna do that just manually, you can come up here and there's a little hammer button. You hit the refine bu uh, button and it just, boom, it just refines the uh, the mesh at that moment in time and then from that point forward just continues to use the new mesh with the more refinement it's again much more relevant for steady state but still available but what i really want to show you is under the solving i can come in and manually set the time step not terribly recommended but possible i can also turn on things like flow freezing flow freezing says hey the fluid flow, the air flow in here is going to be pretty boring, right? The, the air flow through this domain is going to get established and then it's just going to sit there and cool slowly. So I don't want for every single iteration, for every single time step, I don't want you to fully solve that boring air. I want you to freeze the air. In other words, the velocities all stay the same. You're not solving for velocity and pressure. You're assuming that stays the same because all you care about is what that effect that has on the solid. So by turning on a freezing strategy, and I'll just leave the defaults on here, it'll periodically stop solving the fluid, which is a complex Navier-Stokes thing, and turn this into a purely thermal problem. With a purely thermal problem, all the degrees of freedom are one. It's just temperature, right? Uh, the convection coefficients and stuff like that will probably still need to be calculated, but um, it's going to run much, much faster. And so you'll see this actually start to cruise forward and get me results much, much faster. This can take solves from days to hours, hours to minutes, things like that. Um, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the temperature distribution. Because I don't want to make you guys wait until the entire transient study is done. Transient's a, a great way to, to take up a lot of time. Uh, it's also a great way to take up a lot of your CPU. Uh, if you ever, you know, think, oh, well, 
Uh, SolidWorks, you know, never really utilizes my full CPU. Check it out. It's going to max out your CPU every time uh, when you use Flow. There may be some dips and stuff like that, but for the most part, Flow gets chugging. It's going to utilize, I've seen it utilize 32 to 64 cores at 100% utilization solid. Uh, this one seems to be doing some different things at different times, uh, so that's that's what's going on there. All right, so we are physical time, or 110 seconds in. We're actually now, our current time step is the same as our sa uh, saving strategy. So if I wanted to, I could go and actually increase my saving time, and that would increase my time step, and it would get me there faster. Uh, but it's going to give me a lot more data to visualize if I let it run. All right, so for the purposes of this webinar, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to save the results because I can post-process without waiting the full 10 minutes, right? I did 165 seconds, so a couple, two and a half minutes, and now I can close the solver window and take a look. 